I recently finished reading The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks, and I just really want to talk about it and start a little bit of discussion. Uh, before I get into any kind of spoiler territory, I'll give a brief overview of the plot in case you're looking for something spooky to read and you haven't read it or heard about it yet. There is some content warning though, there's some animal abuse and violence towards children throughout the story. I wouldn't really call The Wasp Factory a straight up horror story, it kind of was more of a psychological mystery with some horror elements thrown in. Um, the story is told from the main character's perspective, a boy named Frank, who lives on a small island off the coast of Scotland. That island does have a bridge to the mainland where there is a small village, so it's not completely isolated. We very quickly find out that Frank is an odd kid who has these weird superstitions and rituals, and for the most part, he's free to do whatever he wants on the island with little to no supervision from his father, who is the only other inhabitant at the time on this island. Right away, Frank's father is described as being a little eccentric. He lies to his children for fun. He makes them memorize the measurements of random objects around the house and will just quiz them. And Frank's father was uh, described as a bit of being an old hippie, so when Frank was born, he wanted the birth to be completely off the radar, so Frank actually has no, like, social security number or whatever you call it in Scotland. And so for the most part, Frank doesn't officially exist. Frank has spent most of his life on the island and has pretty much been homeschooled by his father or taught himself pretty much everything he knows. He does have one friend who lives in the nearby village named Jamie, who he'll go to the pub with sometimes on weekends. The story kicks off with the local officer visiting Frank's father and letting him know that Frank's brother Eric has escaped a mental hospital he's been institutionalized at and he is probably making his way towards the island and they are looking for him but they haven't found him yet. This still isn't spoiler territory because you can pretty much read this on the back of the book but Frank lets us know through his narration that he's already killed three people throughout his youth and then that combined with Eric escaping from the hospital and making his way back home is kind of the driving force of the narrative. Eric will occasionally make phone calls back home and Frank's usually the one who answers. And throughout this framing device, it's revealed why Frank killed those three people, um, why Eric was confined to a mental institution, and it explores the pretty abusive relationship between Frank and his father. Frank's detached manner of speaking and lack of empathy in his narration can add some dark comedy to what otherwise might be a little bit unreadable because of how brutal and how dark some of the uh, more violent portions of the story are, but I did find the book itself like beautifully written. It was easy to read and very compelling. Like I couldn't really put it down at some points. And I ended up reading the story in probably three or four days. Um, I highly recommend it if you're looking for something spooky and something a little dark and different to read. All right, so I think I'm gonna move into some spoiler territory now. So if you haven't read the book, I recommend closing the video and reading it. It's not gonna take very long and then coming back with some of your ideas and theories. Um, I'm not like a literary scholar of any kind. I just like stories and like to talk about them. So kind of take that with a grain of salt. All of this stuff is just theories that I came up with after reading the book and thinking about it for a little bit. So I'll give a couple more seconds as a buffer in case someone needs to close the video. And now I'm just going to get the big reveal out of the way. Throughout the story, Frank mentions that he has a disfigurement and that he can never really fully be a man because of an accident that he had when he was a child. Frank reveals that they had a family dog growing up that he admits that he liked to pick on and poke at maybe a little bit too much and one day he probably pushed the dog too far and it attacked him. And during that mauling, he was led to believe that it bit off his genitals and so he had a permanent disfigurement throughout his entire life. And Frank's father, being a little crazy and having his own misogynistic views, decided to take this opportunity to raise Frank as a boy who had been disfigured in the accident with their family dog. Frank's father even went as far as to sneak testosterone doses into most of Frank's meals. That's why Frank's father was primarily the one who did the cooking. 
and that stacked on top of Frank just happened to being a psychopath in the first place kind of made me feel like he was experiencing some kind of gender dysmorphia and that's why I was manifesting in this anger and manifesting in some like very anti-woman, very misogynistic views that he had. And again, I'm, I'm no expert, especially when it comes to this stuff, but it did give me a little bit of a pause when this twist was revealed about how it could be interpreted as some kind of anti-trans, some kind of very hateful message, but I don't think that's what the author meant and that's not what the story was trying to convey. I didn't get that idea at all. But if you have any other thoughts or theories about any of that, um, please let me know. Eric escaping from the hospital and making his way home is, again, the driving force of the narrative. It kind of keeps the action moving and keeps the mystery being revealed. Um, Eric would call Frank from payphones occasionally and stress him out with his erratic behavior. And this kind of led to Frank looking back and reminiscing about his life and through this framing, that's how he reveals he killed people, he reveals the accident. In the climax of the story, Eric finally arrives to the house and he tries to basically blow up the house by setting fire to some chemicals that their father stores under the house. Um, this is kind of resolved pretty quickly. Frank is able to stop the fire, Eric escapes, and then later that night, after Frank and her father clean it up, they kind of have a talk and Frank forces him to tell her what happened and that's how she finds out about the accident being a lie and that she was actually a girl the entire time. I do have a theory about how this buildup was resolved so quickly and what it has to do with Eric making his way back home. Frank's world was turned upside down and she pretty much decides that she has to leave the island and explore the outside world, which was something Frank had no interest in at all. She was happy to be on the island. She was able to do pretty much anything she wanted unchecked. And throughout the story, she even admits she has a pretty healthy fear of the outside world. I kind of interpreted Eric's menacing journey back home as kind of Frank's fear of the outside world creeping in on her island where Frank had complete control over everything. By the end of the story, it's revealed to Frank that she was actually a girl the entire time. And after she makes peace with that, she also makes peace with the fact that she needs to leave the island. And I think that's represented by her and Eric kind of having this peaceful moment together where Eric was representing this stressful, unknown, menacing outside world. The story ends with the two of them coming together. Eric is sleeping on her lap and she accepts that it's time for her to go out and she's having this nice moment with her brother who was kind of this antagonistic force throughout the story. And finally, of course, the wasp factory itself. In the book, it's described as a giant clock-faced death mechanism where basically every hour tick on the clock has a different door, which leads to a different method of basically killing a wasp. Frank puts the wasps in the wasp factory and then waits for them to make a decision about which path they want to go down. And then ultimately they choose a path and then that determines which elaborate method kills them. And then Frank interprets all of that information and uses it as guidance and a kind of fortune-telling, question-answering divinity machine. I also kind of saw the Wasp Factory as a parallel to the way Frank's father kind of was doing experiments and using her, and Frank is doing the same thing with these wasps. There are so many other ideas and topics to be covered in this book. I didn't even touch on some of them because I'm still digesting the story myself. Um, overall, I really liked The Wasp Factory. Um, it was a quick and easy read. Again, there's some like content warnings of, you know, animal abuse and violence towards children. Um, but the story and the mystery was compelling. I liked the twist, even though I can see how it can be a little problematic, but I don't think it was intentionally meant to be that way. Um, I had trouble putting it down because I really wanted to find out what was happening between Frank and Eric and their father. Um, let me know what you thought of the book, if you read it, if you liked it, if you have any other theories, or if you think I'm completely wrong. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good book and I recommend it.